Hey, I'm just sitting here in my office tonight thinking about some things with the Lord, and I wanted to share uh, just a brief devotion with you. Consider when God placed Adam and Eve on the earth and He gave them one commandment. And that commandment was, don't touch this tree, and to do so will cause death. Of course, eventually they did touch the tree, and it caused death, but ultimately we call it sin. They disobeyed the Lord, and as a result of that, they were taken out of the garden and um, told that earth was going to be cursed because of that sin. Well, take it on further a little bit more. The children of Israel were called as God's chosen people to teach the rest of the world. And uh, they didn't always do that very well. But one thing they did was to write down the, the law of God, the holiness of God. And within those scriptures from the prophets, uh, we were told what is right and what is wrong. And for the most part, mankind failed miserably at it. We just do not do very well at what God says to do. As a result of that, God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sin. And Jesus was perfect. He was God in the flesh. That's the only reason He could be the perfect sacrifice. He wasn't as a man meaning that he had sin. He was born in the Spirit and uh, the Spirit of God. So he's pure and he went to the cross as a holy, uh, pure Lamb of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And as he went to the cross, all of the wrath of God that belonged to us for our sin was placed on his shoulders. Christ hung on the cross, now get this, because of our sin. And if, if as believers, and this is my main point, if as believers we could grasp what he did on that cross and, and why he did it, it was because of our sin, perhaps we would learn to hate sin as much as God hates it because of what it does to humanity. God knew what would happen as a result of us becoming disobedient and that passing down from generation to generation. And every time we give in to sin, we are just separating ourselves further and further from the person that God would have us to be. So I, I suppose I want for you and for me, for us to learn to hate sin as much as God does. And any time we're faced with a, 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 an opportunity uh, to say something or to do something that we know this is not of God, look at that as God would not, God would hate this, I want to hate this. Being imitators of Christ is not going to be easy. But I think it will make it a little bit easier to see if we learn that that sin is, is deadly. It, it put Christ on the cross. And learning to do that, we could get to the point where we could metaphorically cut the right hand off because it might offend us or pluck the right eye out because we don't want it to see certain things. And I'm not saying we go out and cut our hands or pluck out our eye. I'm saying we find whatever is necessary to avoid sinful uh, habits and sinful behaviors because we are learning to hate it because God hates it. And when we turn our prayers into, Lord, help me to see things the way you see it, that these are tricks of the enemy, tricks of the flesh, and let me see how you would have me to act, to be pure before you, to be holy, to be righteous, to be as you would have me to be. Forgive me of my sin. Learn to be broken of a contrite spirit before the Lord. This is missing in today's world, where people will accept that we are sinners and that we want to run from it, repent from it, 
as much as possible because God hates it. Christ went to the cross for it. Therefore, we should hate it. Just uh, uh, some food for thought tonight. Spiritual food. Hey, God bless you. And thank you for taking a few minutes to listen with me tonight.